Well, the Transformers Bumblebee movie is mere weeks away at this point, so naturally, I'm going to look at a Bumblebee figure. But not one from the movie, because those toys aren't very good. If I'm going to look at a Bumblebee, considering I'm not a huge fan of Bumblebee, I'm going to look at a figure that's actually really good, that being the Transformers Animated Bumblebee. How often do I look at anything from Animated here on the channel? Either way, he's going to be our focus in the latest Got By True review. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. Please like, comment, share, and of course subscribe, stick around, check out the playlist, see what it is that catches your interest. Please check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors NL, and have a look for me everywhere. And this is Animated Bumblebee. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to source a tire that I was able to use for the missing one on my Power of the Primes Punch Counterpunch. But in exchange, the guy that I, I got that tire from asked if I could do a couple of repairs, or attempt a couple of repairs for him. One of them was to this guy. The ball socket of this shoulder over here was cracked. Unfortunate, because otherwise the figure's pretty great. Truth is, I have heard that those ball sockets are a little bit notorious for cracking. What a shame for an otherwise fantastic figure. Was I able to do the repair? Does it affect the quality of the figure, or is he kind of back to being fantastic again without fear of anything breaking? Well, we're going to start him off in vehicle mode because that's how he came in package and see if it's easy to get him back to this glorious little robot mode. Anyway, enough of me babbling on. Let's head over to the table and take a closer look at animated Bumblebee. That's right, so leave it to me to look at an animated figure in this age of studio series and Bumblebee movie line figures coming out. Um, I think that this is better than really anything we've gotten in the studio series for Bumblebee, mostly because things don't pop off this guy like they do with all of those iterations. And it's a solid size, it's a the plastic feels good. I think it's better than what we're getting mainline for the Bumblebee movie because the all that gimmicky junk is not great, I don't think. Now, again, the only reason I'm looking at this is because I was asked to do a repair on my friend of the channel, Matthew, in exchange for a tire for this guy, my uh, Prime Wars Trilogy Punch Counter Punch. Finally sourced that tire. Uh, took a look at that guy in episode 463, and took a look at uh, the uh, like updated version, in other words, him with his tire, and kind of made a note about the transformation. Uh, you know, a couple of couple of videos after that. Anyway, in exchange for getting that tire, I did a repair on Energon Optimus Prime and this guy, and I I don't look at animated figures very often. It's not a line that I, I have a lot of experience with. It was one that I always thought looked kind of like the, you know, aesthetic look kind of strange, and it does, but man, this is just one of those examples of a figure that is fun, and still fun to this day. I guess this came out somewhere around 2007-ish, I suppose. 2008-ish, I'm not sure exactly when this came out, but like around that time. And yeah, yeah, I, what can I say? I dig it, I really do. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty strong toy. It rolls tremendously well. As is always the case with bumblebees, we have the issue of like kind of a yellow mismatch of the yellow plastic and the yellow paint, but man, they tried. It really reminds me a lot of the kind of mismatch that we got in the Titans Return, I think it was Titans Return, yeah, Titans Return Legends class Bumblebee, like where the paint and the plastic sort of had a little bit of a mismatch there. Same thing here. What, what do you want? Yellow is hard to work with, man. Yellow is hard to work with. Now, there are supposed to be a couple of, 
missile thingies, I suppose. I don't have those. I don't know if Matthew does, but I don't have them here, so such is life. I do, however, think that it is very, very cool that this little hatch pack, hatchback thing can have that back bumper move so that you actually do get sort of like a trunk section in there. I think that's so cool. I think that is fantastic. Yeah, so vehicle mode, it is what it is. This is the way he came in package. We're going to wait and grade everything when we get him in robot mode. And of course, we're going to have to start off first and foremost with his conversion. So how does this guy transform? Well, we... That's a fair question. But by the way, it was a, a shoulder ball joint socket that I had to fix on this guy and part of the chest that I had to fix on the Energon Optimus, who I looked at recently as well. So we begin really by sort of starting to finagle things apart here a little bit. And there, and there, unpeg those doors. Uh, you probably didn't even need to finagle the parts on the back a little bit, but I, I, like, I feel like I've gotten into the habit of doing it. You probably can just start by unpegging the doors, but I, what I was, you know, doing there probably isn't that necessary. I'm just trying to be careful with this because again, it's not mine. And we can pick off this panel here and kind of bring it up out of the way for now. And we pick up this panel over here for the same thing and pick it up. By the way, I didn't mention this, but like red tail lights. Ah, uh, time when we actually had paint. That was fantastic. Anyway, they're up out of the way. And then we can sort of lift off the arms on their ball joints. And I'll show the repair kind of when we get uh, this guy in his robot mode. We come down here and you can flip out the hand and flip out the hand. This is one of those rare occurrences where the hand is an open palm, not a, like a fist. And then we can begin to bring this up over a little bit. There, and Bumblebee's kind of body comes all the way up over and flips out. I do want to show something here uh, when you convert him back to vehicle mode. So I'm gonna kind of zoom in on a certain section and I guess zoom in, try to zoom in and uh, sort of explain that before we go on with our conversion here. Now, one of the challenges that I have found with this guy is going back to vehicle mode. And it's... <sighs> It's a challenge really for a silly reason. Here's why. We really should just be able to fold Bumblebee down. But I find that what happens sometimes is this. We get the kind of fake windshield get caught up on the back bumper. So if that happens to you, I would suggest you actually put your thumb back here on this section and start to bring the whole kind of false hood of B and his head down over. And as long as you cleared this back bumper, you will be able to fold it down and then bring this back bumper down. If you don't do that and you just try and fold this back, it's probably going to get caught up on that back bumper. Or at least it always does for me. Just a word to the wise if you're going back into vehicle mode. Okay, and moving on, now that we have the upper body of B done, and I've kind of explained that part I wanted to explain, we can take him and turn him around and bring this and this section in. They will tab together on the back, no problem. And then we can, here we'll do it on this side first, bring the arms down. And same on this side. We can bring the arm 
down. And his upper body is completely done now. We can split his feet, fold out his toes, take this kind of roof and front windshield section and turn it around. It's on sort of a springy hinge. And turn it around and then at his waist we can Ooh, and I just pop a part off. And that happens a lot, I find this guy, but luckily it just pops back on. Like... Like that. And in the end, without any instructions or experience with this guy honestly and just sort of guessing as I went like boom here we have deluxe class bumblebee and it was and is a solid solid figure it has light piping though it's not really showing it very well there today uh, if you catch the the light there on the back of the head it does light up nicely I don't know I don't know if I can show it there hold on let's let's see Uh, there. There, I think. I think you can see it there. I mean, it it looks really, really good when you can have the light catch it correctly. In terms of his coloring, it's a solid 8. And I say that because while the styling is definitely there, and I think it's amazing that they were able to get, like, kind of the undersized chest, because his arms and his lower legs and his head are all kind of like proportional wise, proportionally speaking, like they're all a bit bigger and they were on the program as well. Like this is accurate. It's amazing to me that they were able to take the more sensible proportions of the vehicle and work it in such a way to give the illusion of these oversized proportions. I think that's brilliant. But I say eight because really there's some black missing on the upper head crest and black lines around the back of his head that are missing. The stripe going down his chest and his foot, that should be on the other side of his body if I'm not mistaken. There's a molded in line on his forearm, that should be black and I feel like just his thumb and his finger should be yellow and that his actual hand should also be that black color. So, you know, and the lower feet at the very bottom, it's molded in to almost be like the, like the sole of a boot, I guess, or a shoe or something. I feel like that was supposed to be black and it's yellow here. So there are, while there are, there's fantastic paint apps here, especially like the detailing on the legs and whatnot. I also recognize that there are certain details that are missing. And if I owned this guy, I'd probably just put them in myself. Nevertheless, an 8 I think is pretty respectable and that's just me nitpicking. You're not mistaken that this is animated Bumblebee. Some people would probably say hey, it's a 9.5. Depends on just how accurate you want your B to be. I do, however, think that this is more accurate than what we got from Japan that was more painted gold. Which looks nice, but it, like he's yellow on the show, right? You know, he just was. So, decent start. The conversion, not hard. Like I said, going from robot back to vehicle, I did want to point out kind of the section to push in on with your thumb so that you have uh, the clearance going past the back bumper. Assuming that you don't get kind of snagged up on the back bumper, it's pretty easy and solid. It's pretty great. Now, it has been noted, apparently, that the shoulder ball sockets do like to crack and indeed that was the case here one of them did crack i think it's the one on this side yeah the one on this side so i had to rebuild the socket now it's it's fine a bit thicker than what it was but it's fine and it works just great something to be aware of a little bit unfortunate 
you know, that that's the case. Um, I don't know how widespread it ever was, but I know that I've heard the issue reported as like something to be aware of. What about the transformation though? It's easy, it's fun. We have a twist at the waist and you know, we have the upper body folding under the whole vehicle. Well, that's interesting, but not overly complicated. I'm gonna say it's easily a 9.5. And the only reason I'm not giving it a 10 is because you might get kind of uh, held up on that back bumper. So 9.5, an eight and a 9.5, this guy's easily an 8.75. Uh, maybe even a nine, maybe even a nine, let's say a nine. What about the articulation? Well, the head, I absolutely dig. It can go forward, it can go back, he can look down, he can look way up. It can, you know, look to the left, look to the right, look to the left and up and the right and up. Because like, it's two pieces. The head is like on a ball joint, but then the neck is like a hinge down to the body. The shoulders, they can go all the way around. This is the repaired uh, ball joint, but it, it, it's the same on both sides. We have a butterfly in. Uh, can't really kind of go back there. I don't think we have a bicep swivel. No, we don't have a bicep swivel, but like where you got the butterfly, you still kind of get across the body, so it's, it's all right. The hand doesn't move. We get an elbow to say 90 degrees. Um, in terms of the arms going out to the side, not a lot, not a, not a huge pile. I don't know, like, I, I guess it's all right. It's definitely comparable to say how far out you can get with um, classics, Sunstreaker and Sideswipe and Red Alert, for example. The legs, well, first of all, we have a nice waist and the, the legs can go way forward. They can go way back, 90 degrees at the knee. Uh, we have a, a swivel that I think is on the lower leg instead of being up on the thigh, but we have a swivel. Uh, we have the toes that can, you know, give us like an, I guess like a toe, toe tilt and toe tilt out to the side for some weird reason. They can tilt down and up, knee to 90 degrees, despite the odd uh, kind of proportions. I really didn't expect the knee to go to 90 degrees, but it does. And the legs can do full splits. I, I, I think I read somewhere that there's 17 or 18 points of articulation on the guy. Like that's, it's not bad. And he can do this, which I absolutely dig. You can fold his hands away and you can fold out this piece and out this piece. Later molds um, apparently had these hide in the forearms better, like it was some slight remolding, but like he can put his arms to, together and I'll see if I can see if I can get these up here and out. Like he can put his arms together and do the whole uh, stinger thing like i think that's cool even with some arm limitations he can still pull this off and pull off a lot of dynamic poses the articulation the guy was a, a solid nine the articulation is a solid nine overall this is a great beat it's a solid solid nine but some people have criticized him saying that hey he is too large and perhaps he is because even on the show he was kind of small and this is uh, like a, kind of your typical size deluxe at least in fact here he is alongside a bevy of bees uh, the one that we were focusing on is right here in the center of course and like you see deluxes to either side from the war for Cybertron Fall of Cybertron game and from Transformers Prime Beast Hunters and like He's a deluxe size, there's no doubt. Now, arguably, he should be smaller, like maybe Legends size uh, FOC B here, or the Legends size uh, Titans Return B. Of course, perhaps the best size would be the Activators animated Bumblebee, 
who is represented here by the KO of that figure. I thought it was a, like a Legion or a Legends class figure. It was pointed out to me that it was, in fact, the KO of the Activators uh, version of this guy. I don't know, you be the judge. Absolutely understand how something like that uh, activator over there, and granted that's the KO, but I understand how that might be considered a more accurate size. But in terms of being just a fun Transformers toy, this Bumblebee rocks. And in terms of being a Bumblebee, this Bumblebee rocks as far as any Bumblebee can go. You know, I didn't think I could be enthusiastic about a Bumblebee figure. I really didn't because we've had a lot of questionable ones over the last little while. Not that they don't look good, not that they don't have great points to them, but the tolerances have been rough to say the least. Now granted, I don't have the missile thingies that this guy came with, but otherwise he's pretty fantastic and the plastic feels great. I'm not really sure why there's an issue with the ball sockets breaking, but with the repair that I did over here, it seems fine now. It seems to be working just fine. The articulation in the shoulders could be slightly better than what it is, especially the outward range. I mean, we're looking at a limit of about there, roughly. Otherwise, everything works really great on this guy couple of additional little paint apps would have helped things along, but overall it's a pretty strong figure. But then again, most of the figures in the animated line were pretty fun. Even if the proportions looked a little bit odd. It was accurate, it was the style from the show, and this is no different. Ah, uh, the days when figures were made with, well, pride in design. It's interesting, but it's not overly complicated. It's cohesive, but it's not boring by any stretch of the imagination because everything just looks so interesting on him. Even his expressive little face. I like the guy. I'm glad I was able to repair him. Let me know what you think of this guy or any animated figures. It's not a line that I get to look at nearly often enough here for you guys. Maybe, hopefully, I will get the opportunity to do a little bit more of that in the future. We shall see. Nevertheless, I appreciate you dropping by giving me some of your extremely valuable time. Again, I'm going to say please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out tremendously. Let me know what you think of this guy, and I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.